guests and welcome to iCoding Club. My name is Pravin and today we are going to talk about the image cropper. Now image cropper can come in a different way and style. Today we are going to talk about uh, the fixed selection approach uh, where the aspect ratio of the clock, uh, cropped image is fixed. There is another article in the left side where it says a flexible selection. You can actually check out this article if you want a flexible selection approach. But today we are going to talk about the fixed selection approach. Now what is the fixed selection approach? The fixed selection approach define and describe uh, the aspect ratio of the cross image before. So you can actually drag drop the uh, drag the image out. You can actually zoom it. But the aspect ratio of image crop image will not change. So if you see this image, or if I go back, zoom out, and show here. The aspect ratio of the both the cropped image is still seen. Now you may wonder what is the advantage of this. This is the this is the very nice cropper. It just can be used uh, where the you know at the top of a blogger page or of you know your Facebook profile page where you are actually showing the your image. You always find the length and breadth of that particular section is always constant. You can't change it. On those places, uh, this fixed aspect aspect ratio image cropper is very very helpful. So before I start explaining, you know how things work, let's let's see what we have in this page. So yeah, we, we have the demo. You can actually drag and uh, try it. After that, yeah, there's a placeholder for video which I'm building right now. There's a code which you can copy in you know the, the whole code and it will work or you can copy in the section the way you want and at the bottom we have some related article on the iCoding club uh, the first one I already talked about is the flexible se selection approach the second one is actually not the cropper but it's helpful because in the real life you might want to upload the image first and then crop it and then you actually want to send to the server. Now there is a pre part of it, the upload part of the image. There is a post part of it where you are actually sending to the server. This article actually explain the pre and post part of it. But right now let's stick to this article and let's dig into the code, you know, how it works. So let's complete the, the EG part of it, the, the HTML. It's pretty straight the table layout to display uh, the canvas and the right side where uh, right side placeholder of image then we have the HTML5 uh, slider or the range input and there when we start about the code part of it now code is divided into two part the one is the animation part of it which take care of drag uh, this dragging thing and the second part is definitely getting the data out of, of this canvas and creating the image out of it now to understand the, how this animation work let's talk about the animation first we have to understand that most of the ui animation based out of three function or three events mouse up mouse down and mouse move Let's see if I want to create this kind of animation, how I will do, you know, I should be when I'm clicking, when I'm doing the mouse down, I really want to record where actually I actually uh, did the down mouse down event, you know, the coordinate of it. When I'm moving it while I'm pressing the mouse, I want to understand and I want to know in the code how much I moved. So what if from the original place, I get the delta of how much mouse moved. That might give us, or actually that will give us the delta, you know, how much uh, image I want to move. And fourth is, yeah, mouse up, which will stop the process. Every time we do anything, any changes on the UI, we are actually creating the, the whole canvas back again. So that start the redrawing of this image on the canvas from this particular point, that is the, the origin point of the canvas. We redraw the image depending on how much user moved. Then we build this outer uh, 
I'm going to cut out and this is the way it works. So post explaining, you know, what we are planning to do, let's dig the code. You can see the few of the point as the base X, base Y, last point X, last point Y. Describe, you know, most what I just explained that the initial coordinate and the last coordinate. As I said, there are three methods which are most important. That is mouse down, mouse move and mouse up event. I will come to the part of the draw image uh, where we actually creating the image on the canvas but let's let's talk about the, you know, the animation first so what we're doing on the mouse down the mouse down we noting down where the user actually clicked or landed on the canvas then we are definitely taking the, the you know making the click event equal to true which uh, tell us the code that if now user drag it or do the mouse over consider it's more like a drag let's talk about one more time you know the click event equal to true uh, click equal to true plus the mouse movement is equal to drag it. now what mouse moves does it's you know it's if we uh, and the user already clicked then is keep drawing the image what i'm trying to do is I'm, I'm passing the the current location of the mouse to the draw image we have to see the draw image part of it to understand you know how actually i'm drawing the image just quickly complete the third event also because we are not doing anything special there on the mouse up we're just making the click equal to false let's let's talk about the draw image which is the most important method to draw the image on the canvas as i said what we have to identify here is the delta of the movement how much user moved his mouse while pressing the mouse the, the basic thing first we're clearing the canvas now what i do i take the original location of um, image from where I started drawing it that is the most of the case it will be zero then I get the current coordinate and subtract it from the last point you can understand by now that this will give us the Delta how much user moved same is true for the Y also suppose getting the Delta of the user uh, mouse movement we come to this particular method that is a draw image now it take the five argument the first one is the original image uh, original image which has provide us the binary data the base x and base y is actually the point from where we want to start drawing the image now you can understand that here i actually calculated now so if i go back and move this mouse a little bit to the left side and the top you can understand that the base X and base Y are in now in minus position somewhere at the here and I'm trying to draw this image from this particular point and it goes till here you, know, you can see you know the right and the bottom uh, edges edges of this particular uh, image same is true when I move to here now the base X and base Y point into this particular location and I'm drawing the image here so I got the point you know from where I have to create the image the second part is how long so the the length and breadth of image is fixed you know that is the image width and image height that what we want to do or what we want and this is the length and breadth of the image but there's another part of it which let us zoom the image right which enable the zooming that is the scale of it let's right now uh, we will come back to the scale part of it but just right now think about it we take the image we get the coordinates x and y from where we want to start the drawing if we get the width and height of the image and we draw it now to understand the scale part of it let's see how it work when I'm zooming it I'm increasing the scale value 
and I'm decreasing it, I'm decreasing the scale value. Where is happening? Let's see, you know, this is a scale slider and we say on input update scale. Now, just to explain things a little bit, on the Chrome on input, we get this, the smooth uh, zooming. On I, on change, we get the smooth uh, scaling. So on the production code, you might want to have one event as on input, another event as on chain, and that together will provide us the smooth zooming thing. Otherwise, you will get the abrupt zooming. If you just change it to on chain, you will come to know. Let's let's back to the uh, our article. So here we have we have the update scale method. We go to the update scale method. Here we have now this update scale method take care of uh, increasing the scale value. You can see whenever the method get called, I get the value of a scale and put in the scale and I just call, call the draw image. Now draw image take the updated value of a scale, multiplied it with the initial width of image and let's say 100 by 100 image turn to 200 by 200 or 300 by 300 and that will give us the zooming effect on the canvas however when we are cutting the image you can see that there is a uh, the cut method yep here we have here what we're doing is we're getting the we are, we are creating a temporary canvas and we are providing the canvas right away understand the fact that you can actually provide the image as the first argument or the canvas as the first argument why canvas in this time because if i pro provide the image i have to identify you know from where i have to do the cut that include the, this delta i have to take care of zooming uh, when i'm doing the cutout but when I provide the canvas, I'm pretty sure that I have to start cutting this image or the canvas value from this point to this point here and this month. Pretty straight. No uh, uh, extra calculation or uh, complexity involved uh, if I provided the image uh, in place of canvas. So we just to avoid all those things, we are providing the canvas. the X point from where we have to start, that is the cutout width. So we are just passing out the black portion of cutout. We are starting uh, to take out the image after that. This is for width. And the window width, window width uh, uh, is the, the length and breadth of the white area inside the, in the cutout. We just take this image, we draw it again pointing to the zeroth location. So we just take out the data and start drawing on the canvas from the origin. What it does mean is, consider it something like, you know, we take this image, pull it and start drawing from here, here and here, something like that, right? And post the step, we have, you know, uh, the extracted image into the on the canvas. All we have to do is we have to call the data URI, uh, URI uh, method from the, the canvas, which uh, does it, it take the uh, base64 encoded data and we just put it on one variable. Post that what we do is like, we just point that uh, data to the, uh, to the temporary image and we are good to go. Now, Let's move further. I mean, this is a related article. If you want to uh, try something different for the flexible selection or the uh, you know, file upload part of it, what I already explained. So this is all I what I uh, had to explain. Uh, if you like this video, uh, then you can actually press the like button uh, in the video or you can subscribe to this channel for more and more good video like this.
if you have any doubt you want to pass out the comment you can just come here and pass the, uh, the comment or you can provide uh, pass the comment on the youtube video down on the youtube video and i can check that and i can reply that thank you for watching this video thank you